So in today's video, we're gonna go from this boring red look here to this cool electric neon look here using footage from the original Blackmagic Pocket. G'day and welcome back to the channel. I'm in a very good mood today. I'm actually strangely very excited about doing this grade. So this is original Blackmagic Pocket footage. I have a Blackmagic Pocket I bought probably 10 years ago. I remember one thing about this camera, it has the worst noise pattern any digital camera ever has in the entire history of the world. It is so bad. I shot this last night. Um, there's a red light hitting the ceiling and then there's another light over here. And there's also my eyes looking towards a bottle of wine that I'm gonna drink later on. <laughs> and that's me thinking about the bottle of wine. Alrighty, so let's get into it. So the first things first is we need to set up our color management, of course. So come down here to the little cog. Under color management, we're working in color science DaVinci YRGB. Timeline color space is Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. If you're on a laptop, Maybe just go to Rec 709 and Apple Color Space, same as Timeline. Now what we want to do is make another node. So Alt S and then go up to Effects, Color Space Transform. And then this is not 4K Film Gen 1, but Blackmagic Design Film Gen 1. It's that old. Okay, now input Gamma. We want to be in Blackmagic Design Film. So now we still have an incredibly red image. Now you may be thinking, well, we could just go to the offset and move that around until we can try and get that neon look, or we can do the smart way. And that is we go down to our camera raw settings here. We change decode using to flip. Then let's change our ISO to 200 because the scene was too bright. Then this is the big one, color temperature. Change that to 2000 we already have our look. Now, we're a little bit dark, but that's okay. Let's take the tint off. Actually, you know what? Let's leave the tint as it was. Cool, that looks good. Alrighty, so let's get rid of this garbage. And then let's go back to here. Let's make a, another node, so Alt S, and then Alt P twice. Now we have our little setup. And then let's make another node before this. This will be for our Denoise. Now in our first one, we're just gonna change our exposure a fair bit, bring it up a little bit, and then bring it down slightly. Come around there, looks pretty good. So we'll call that one EXP for exposure, of course. Now in this one here, what we want to do is at the moment we have this nice neon look, but we have no color separation between this area and this area. So what we're gonna do here. We're gonna to come to our custom curves. We're gonna to go to hue versus hue. Then we're gonna mark a point on the face. So you can see how this area here is slightly different color to this area here. Now when I shot this, I probably should have been a lot brighter in this area, but it is what it is. Now let's expand our range a little bit and let's get that separation already looking better. Let's go to a better frame. Not that one, I look like a weirdo when I'm smiling. <laughs> Maybe, okay, that's a good frame. Alrighty. As you can see, we have nice color separation. Look at my hair, Jesus, I need a haircut. We have nice color separation from the pink and the blue, but I reckon we can pump it up even more, get a really saturated look going on. So now what we're gonna do is, in our second, third node, sorry, Let's do some contrasting. And let's go back to our curves and let's go to custom curve. And now we're gonna make the gentlest of curves, edible splines, everyone's favorite. Bring it down a little bit, nice. Bring it up just a little bit. We're getting a nice color contrast between these two colors. Color contrast is just the best. Now again, let's even make this contrast here. And let's bring this one down just a little bit. This way we're making the background slightly darker, which is cool. But then we're still pumping up this area here, which is also great. But as you can see, got a nice look going on, looking pretty good. I mean, this guy's not looking good, but you gotta work with what you got. Alrighty, now. Now in this note here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sharpen this footage up just a little bit. But we'll just sharpen him up, not the rest of the scene. 
So let's get our little power window here. Put it on this guy's face. Cool, cool, cool. And I guess we should track it. You know what? For once, I'm going to let DaVinci Resolve have a crack at tracking. All right, it did one frame and then it gave up. Here it goes. Not bad so far. So it should go back the other way. It didn't, and that's okay. So normally when you click this little arrow here, it's supposed to go back and forward. But that's okay. You're trying your best resolve. That's all we can ask from you. Oop, touch of the nose. Looks pretty good. Looks like we have a decent track. Probably because I'm not moving around. So you know, let's not brag too much resolve. The thing with the Blackmagic Pocket original is, is that it is a little bit soft. It is only 1080p, but that is okay. So let's go down to mid slash detail, which is strange. I don't know why I just call it mid detail. And just pump it up just a little bit. That's a little too much. So we'll say 25. Now let's go full screen. So that's with it off. And that's with it on. And we're just bringing up a little bit of detail. You may not pick that up in YouTube, but I can certainly see the difference. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to chuck some denoising on it. And the thing is, if you look at this image here, we don't actually have noise on the face or the bright areas. Right, what we can do, we have disgusting noise back here. That's not even from YouTube compression. That's just <laughs> from the actual camera. So what we're going to do is get a better frame. That's a nice frame. What we're going to do is we're going to just denoise the shadows. So let's take hue, saturation off, and let's shift H or magic wand. At the moment, everything is selected, but we don't want that. Let's go to our high and let's bring it right back down. And then let's soften that right out. Maybe up a little bit more. Thing is, by denoising the shadows, we're leaving the face alone. And that way we're not smoothing out the face, as in we're not taking away that sharpness we put back in. So that's a good thing. I mean, it's not the best face to look at, but it's a face and, you know, it is the most important part of the scene even if it's that face. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Shift H off. Now let's go to denoise and denoise it. Do some spatial, better, large, just a little bit. And let me just render this bad boy. If I can find it. Okay, uh, what is my render on at the moment? It is on. Smart, ha, <laughs> because I'm so smart. And then temporal, chuck on five, large, just a little bit. Temporal is the big one, really. The one that always smooths out your footage too much. Crank it right up. It is a pretty noisy image, so it's all good. Now, what we want to do here is, I guess, wait till it renders. So let's chuck our timeline back on. As you can see, little red line is slowly, slowly going up. And that's me waiting for the red line. So I'll just skip ahead and then you guys will come back to a nicely rendered clip. So welcome back. So as you can see, we have a nicely denoised image. There's still a little bit going on here, but there's nothing we can do about that. We have this really great pink color going on and we have this really nice blue. I think you would call this steel blue, which is a color. I know that sounds a bit strange, but steel blue is a color. I actually have a gel that is still blue. There's one more thing that we should do. And let's add some saturation in. And let's add saturation in by, by going to this node here and then coming down to color space, HSV, to saturation, vibrance. And then going to channels. Let's take channel one off. We don't need hue. Channel three, we definitely don't need vibrance. In our primaries, let's go to our gain wheel. And then let's just add some color in and see what this bad boy looks like. Oh, actually, you know what we're gonna have to do? Turn off the denoise. Make it easier on myself and my poor little computer, which I really need to upgrade soon. So we've made our saturation adjustment. So this is with the saturation node off and that's with the saturation node on. And now we're getting a nice deep blue, but it's not too dark that it's blending in with this background here. So we still have great color contrast separation. And this image is strangely sharp. So the way that I tell if the light is hitting my 
key side and my fill side is that. So what I do is I close one eye and then open the other one. So then I can see if this face is brighter than this side here. It is very hard to film, but that's okay. Now let's chuck the noise on and then I'll just render that. And then we can have our closing arguments about the look. So we have denoised our image. So we have a nice smooth looking image. And again, we have really nice color contrast. This pink is so great and this blue is great. We have a really electric neon look, which I'm very happy with. I'm really surprised what a great image I got out from the Blackmagic Pocket. It's only 1080p. But the thing is with any camera, as long as you have nice lighting, you can get a really nice image basically out of any camera. So that is it for today. But just a quick reminder that this is the image that we started with, this flat red washed out color to this neon look. So we've gone a long, long way, but it didn't take all that much. So it's just all about experimenting with DaVinci Resolve. And sometimes you just stumble across some really cool looks. So thanks very much for watching. I had a great time color grading this. Again, really happy with the result. If you want me to grade those other images, let me know in the comments below. I have some really interesting ideas that I reckon we could do. If you want the footage, comment below and I'll chuck it in. A sound on it. I think you can hear my neighbors yelling at each other in the background, but also we have these other shots here, which were shot with a different light and we can muck around with them. So if you'd like to see more color grading with this footage, let me know in the comments below. I've really been enjoying grading this footage. I think it's really good. Like you can get a lot out of this camera. I actually really like the original Blackmagic Pocket and it was easy to shoot with and fun to grade with. So that's for now. I've been Drew from Gringo Productions and I'll see you next time.